least. Uh, what's your interaction with the actual open source SNORT community now? Are there still, is it still 90% you know, you and Sourcefire, or are there a lot of external contributions and you're just one fish in a bigger pond? Um, I would say it's primarily controlled by, uh, by Sourcefire. If you ever looked at the, the uh, lifespan of SNORT, in the early days there was a fair amount of uh, contributions of uh, modules to the system, plugins and things like that, but they were primarily output plugins. Uh, once in a while, preprocessor uh, plugin modules for doing um, more complex protocol analysis. Um, but a lot of them were very prototypical. They were, they were kind of early, hey, I did this, and it's pretty cool, and it does these functions and things like that. As we've uh, matured over time, uh, we've come to realize that you know, there are things that belong in Snort, and there are things that don't belong in Snort. For example, Snort should not be talking in real time to a database because it's very, uh, it's SAP's performance. So we have uh, um, you know, taken out stuff that doesn't need to be there, uh, and um, uh, try to slim it down a little bit to a core set of functionality that we believe is the proper set of functionality, then we have external programs that do stuff like uh, output processing, things like that. Um, but we do still, uh, we interact with, with the, you know, the, the mailing list activities actually been, been creeping up lately, so uh, um, for a, a while it was, uh, you know, it was off its peaks, obviously, back in the late 90s, early sure. 2000s, it's kind of when the uh, mailing list activity was in its heyday. But it's, it's getting active enough now where I'm, I'm considering writing uh, filters on my, uh, account here, uh. It makes sense because what I see uh, is I see a lot of big name vendors, we'll call them Linux vendors, uh, using open source Snort as their IPS period. That's it. Not you know, I'm not paying you for anything or anything. They just put it out and then they charge commercial support on top of that. Is that I suppose that's how open source is supposed to work, but can Snort stand on its own without uh, source fire essentially? Oh, well, I mean, uh, kind of depends on what you mean by that. I guess uh, it certainly uh, stands on its own in terms of being you know, a functional system that anybody can use, right? Uh, sure. And uh, the, the issue that you get into with uh, intrusion detection technology um, is that if you don't keep it up to date, right, it really does go stale. So if you if you don't keep it uh, keep it moving, then eventually it won't be very useful for you. Uh, anyway. um, so if Sourcefire was to you know if an asteroid fell on top of Sourcefire headquarters and all that, you know we all ceased to be. Uh, um, if that were to happen, then somebody would have to take the ball and run with it because uh, it doesn't um, it, it will go stale if you don't maintain it. You don't do the packaging yourself though. The Linux maintainers and individual distributions are doing that work, so I would assume that they're kind of running with that ball, or is that not the right way of thinking of it? Um, no, yeah, we kind of, all we do is produce a, a source code tarball. Yeah, and then and, they, they and, package. Right, and they can um, do whatever, you know, any, like any open source sure, project. Sure, so. as it should be. When do you make a decision that you say this really should be an open source because it's at that foundational level versus something that would give you a competitive differentiation? Uh, that's actually a really... Uh, healthy topic of debate. <laughs> and, I can uh, imagine. Source uh, there are things that we ho have not open source that uh, that I think we should, and there are things that uh, uh, we have open source that I've been very happy that we did. Um, and uh, you know, different people have different opinions. Yeah. And, you know, um, usually, uh, you know, we, we try to do things, especially when we're talking about releasing open source uh, stuff. We try to come to some degree of consensus. Yeah. Um, so there's things that are obviously. Don't, shouldn't be open source, like RNA was a technology, you know, it was a new thing, and it, it was venture funded essentially to build yeah. that technology, so obviously that was going to stay close, but um, stuff that we put into Snort, like the target-based engines and the, uh, um, the anti-evasion technology, you know, we put some really cutting up stuff. We, we do get contributions, they are mostly uh, patch-oriented, um, sure. sometimes for bugs, sometimes it's a little feature here and there, but we don't see big contributions like we had back in the early days of the project because, well, I, I think for a few reasons, you know, so we're building a commercial product, which means if you're going to put code into yeah. it, it's got to be vetted, which means the process for actually getting it in there is uh, slower than it would be in a regular open source project. And we have we have performance and um, uh, configuration things that we have to pay attention to, and so um, we just don't see the contributions like we used to in that regard. But you know, I don't think anybody uh, um, is concerned that Snort is missing kind of okay. core functionality. But we do still see a lot of development around the open source community, just people taking Snort and like you know doing a project, uh, writing their own preprocessor uh, for it, and then we hear about it, and you know, sometimes people. Are, 
think about donating it, but a lot of that stuff is maintained as third party patches. Yeah. Uh, and then the other open source project, which I know you acquired, was uh, Clam AV, which, and then you merged that with uh, Immunet, and now it's part of FireAmp, kind of, sort of. Uh, how are you managing that uh, Clam AV open source community now? Is that similar to how Snort has evolved? Uh, it's uh, it's pretty similar to it. Um, so we have uh, uh, people inside our uh, BRT or vulnerability research sure. team who maintain that project and uh, work with the community on it. Uh, that's a very interesting project because the volume of malware uh, that we get exposed to as a result of it. Yeah. Uh, we really uh, it, it's been very uh, very good for a lot of reasons. Even though we haven't really specifically made. Uh, made it into a product that we sell for money. Uh, <coughs> the, the data, the intelligence that we get as a result of having it, and plus baking it into the fire and um, Well, so we've taken the Clam AV engine, right? We've put it into the uh, yeah. into the uh, connector for that, and now what we've got is we have the only enterprise uh, anti malware system to deploy an enterprise manager and signatures, which we think is pretty powerful. But Clam AV has allowed us to do that. And we keep the community going, we keep them. Uh, um, you know, keep releases coming out, keep Good. the community up and running.